What's crackalacking, everybody? Uh, I just, first of all, I want to say I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird. I'm getting over the cold, so if my voice goes a little RFK Jr., forgive me. Um, upcoming dates. I have live shows coming up. Uh, Tucson, Arizona, May 3rd through the 4th at Laughs Comedy Club. May 12th, I'm going to be in Dallas, Texas, along with my buddy Nabil the Extremist with the Uncensored Las Vegas show. Uh, that's going to be in Dallas, Texas at Hyenas Comedy Club. Uh, May 16th, we'll be at Ground Zero Blues Club at uh, in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, May 18th through the 19th, being Gonzales, Louisiana for the Lunchbox Comedy Festival. June 28th through the 29th, I'll be in Boston, Massachusetts at Nick's Comedy Stop, legendary comedy club, Nick's Comedy Stop. And then July 12th through the 13th, I'll be in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., at the Comedy Loft. So be like your mom and come see me live. So it's the uh, the first sweet potato pod, and there was one person that I wanted to have on this show, and he uh -huh. wasn't available. So we have yep, yep. Kool Aid, yeah, Alex Hansel. What's up, man? Hello, how you doing? I'm here, feeling very svelte. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so and am nimble. I. Now. <laughs> Heck yeah! No, thank you so much for having me and uh, uh, popping my uh, sweet potato cherry too. Well, thank you for popping mine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, all right, sweet potatoes. Yeah. Uh. So first off, I, I got to talk. Your special just—it's out. It's available now on yep. Laugh After Dark. Yep. Dagmar's brother. Dagmar's brother. Uh, Amazon, and then for my ballers on a budget out there, also YouTube. So hell yeah, just watch it. Go watch it, and then come see me at a live show. So watch the rest of this episode if you're watching on YouTube, and then yeah. flip o flip over. That's yeah. how old I am. I'm <laughs> just flip the channel over. Tell to tell one of your grandsons <laughs> to walk over to the TV and use the wrench. To <laughs> Do you ever have that? We had the Zenith, like the, the, well, you're a lot younger than I am, but we used to have like the Zenith, like uh -huh. it was a full, it was just sitting on the floor. Right. And you had to change the channel, like manually. Uh, so I've, I've been blessed that my dad was always like an AV nerd. Okay. And so we, uh, and would always get good deals from the store that he worked at. So he has had like a, you know, sweet Hitachi TV. Not like huge big screens, but the big fucking heavy fucker CRT ones. Oh, shit. I didn't so know you were in a big had, time, man, on yeah. the show. That's cool. <laughs> and then my, my dad also had like a, what we would call the music room. And, uh, you know, just like all kinds of hi-fi racks and, you know, 50 disc CD changer and like this badass tape deck and everything else. And then. My dad had thousands of CDs. Really? Like nuts. And uh, that was the music room. And then when I'd get a new CD from, you know, where it's like 10 CDs for one cent from Columbia House. Yeah, yeah. I had all the worst words you could imagine. I'd go into the music room and play the music in there. And then my mom would just hear the bad words. And then with a thick German accent go, turn this shit off. <laughs> What are you doing? You know, and I'm like, but it's music, mom. You know? <laughs> See, a, a total different bringing up because my stepdad at the time, uh, he actually built his own antenna for our TV. All right. So he put it up on top of the roof and it was just this huge stick with a hula hoop on it and uh -huh. the wires were like around it. So like my mom came home once. And Did she, he build other ones for the trailer park he lived in? Or? Dude, we were, we, I was just going to say, and we had just upgraded to a double wide. So like my mom thought, here we are. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. finally made it. And now we have a hula hoop on the roof. <laughs> I didn't know your dad was the engineer from the movie Twister. <laughs> just taking soda cans and throwing them into the fucking wind. <laughs> he was like, oh, we get Channel 4 from Baltimore now. <laughs> Four, <don't>, yeah. <laughs> we got UHF channels. Oh, yeah, that's well, a man. Weird Al movie. That's all <laughs> I know it about is, it. Yeah, it is. It was a U, uh, Weird Al. <laughs> uh, so you just moved to Las Vegas three months ago. <laughs> to North Las Vegas. <laughs> to North Las Vegas <laughs> from Henderson. To, See, I pay yeah. attention before we before we started. Yeah. We were talking about this. <laughs> Um, but you're originally from Texas. Yeah, San Antonio is home. San Antonio. Yeehaw. So is that, and that's where you started. I have to holster him. I can't have him out in public. That's where you started stand-up, right? Yeah, San Antonio. I was uh, like 20, 24. It was right after college. And uh, yeah, that's where I started. And uh, started at the River Center Comedy Club. That was downtown and the uh, Big Tourist Trap Mall. And then like two, three years after that club was open, the same owners opened another club near the uh, airport uh, called the LOL. And I guess that's like, oh, okay. then I kind of like that's moved on there, to that man. one. That one's still there. Yeah. The uh, River Center, I think now, I haven't been yet, 
but I think now it's a rainforest cafe. So oh, that's nice. Thanks, uh, capitalism. Yeah, sure. yeah. Why that's not? Great. <laughs> that's uh, twenty four. Starting right after college is sort of like that's a perfect. T- I I I dropped out of high school. Okay. And then I waited twenty years, and I started when I was thirty nine. So same I mean, same pretty, yeah, same same. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, started in Olympia. Have you ever done much stand up up in Washington? Uh, I have actually. When uh, when I was touring with Jake, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, we linked up in Texas, and then uh, we had a bunch of great shows together. He invited me out to to visit him in Vegas, and then we toured together for about a year, year and a half. We lived together for about a year. And then toured together almost two years. Was that before or after the DDP yoga stuff? After. Okay. After so he got sober. You didn't get Jake, yeah. like the Jake of... Here and there. Oh, yeah, You yeah. know, because with, with any addiction issues, you know, um, what is it? Uh, and just, you know, in fact, with myself of, um, what is it? Uh, you know, not fuck-ups, but... Um, Miss... When you... Ah, when you, uh, uh, oh, fuck. When you... Relapse. <laughs> that's it. There Boom. we go. Hey, <laughs> it's one of the words. Uh, when he relapses, part of the recovery, you know, and yeah. so it would happen here and there. But you know, nobody's perfect. But sure. we actually did like fifteen shows in between Portland and Seattle, and like do all these small. Yeah, we did Tacoma. I think I remember when he came. That would have been weird. I, yeah. I was going to get tickets to it, and then I don't know. Like I probably <laughs> lost my job or something. But I was going to come to that show. Yeah, we uh, did uh, a place called I remember it was Walla Walla. Oh yeah, that yeah, place. where the prison. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. <laughs> and we did like a bunch of these little small towns. And I just remember all this lush greenery. And it was a beautiful part of the country. Loved it. Lush and greenery then, was just what was in Jake's bag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We did indulge in that for <laughs> sure. And uh, that's back when I was smoking. But then uh, I remember something else. There was a, a, <laughs> a sign on the highway that said Mattress Ranch. And I was like, finally, a ranch I don't want. (laughs) And I think that night I tried to make it to a bit. And then I was like, i got to revisit that mattress ranch. Mattress ranch. I remember those. those, They had all the stupid little cartoon statues out in front. Oh, okay. All right. And then a lot of, like, pro-Trump stuff that was up there before, you know, I was like, Oh, okay. Oh, we're in this part of the... Oh, all right. Yeah. So. Wa- Washington State, it's it's a blue state. Yeah. But it's only blue because of, like, the two or three major cities on the west. Yeah. Like, every place else you go, it's red. Yeah, same thing in Texas. You know, Austin's blue as shit. And, like, cool, nuke it. Uh, and then... <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is like, yeah, that's the way it should be. You know? <laughs> Where's my Dr. Pepper? All right. <laughs> it was in my rider for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't really talk a lot about politics, but uh, Israel or Palestine, where are you? Oh, no, man. Um, so <laughs> you got the... <laughs> don't clip that. And uh, <laughs> you know who's who. <laughs> and I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I just know, like, my the content I get is very carefully curated, and I just go... Oh, that's what we call them now. <laughs> I feel like I feel like throughout your entire life, there's been a lot of oh, that's what we're supposed to call them now. Yeah. <laughs> Just the no, there we go. Oh, they're coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> We've upset. <laughs> we're already getting canceled. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. See, uh, a lot of people think that you know being ignorant and racist is the same thing. No, I'm a very cultured racist. <laughs> 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 what is your favorite racial slur? Oh man, Jesus! Uh, you hit Jesus. me with the classic. That's not, so is no. that like a, for Jews or <laughs> Jews or Christians? It kind of like covers uh, everybody. Know, uh, hit me right off the the beginning. Um, just anything uh, uh, anti Italian or anti uh, 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 mix. What are they called? Potato jugglers. Irish. That's Irish. It. Yeah. So very safe. You're going with the very safe ones. Oh, wow. I, uh, oh okay. <laughs> I see. How- I was not expecting. I didn't bring it. my clan hood today. Right. That's two questions. Have been out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> That's two questions so far you've answered that I really didn't expect an answer from. <laughs> so uh, we're all God's children. So sure, yeah, sure. What was the uh, real quick? I'm going to go over to our producer Derek. What's up, Jamie? Uh, He's our Jamie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. What's up? Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> is, no, your pants. Pull them up. And <laughs> this is soon to be toeless Rogan. Is that too much? That's too much. Toeless toe? diabetes. Oh, it's okay. Because we're both large, and so ah. we have diabetes, you lose the toe. 
We can cut that out. Are, <laughs> there's going to be no vertical versions of this podcast. You're like, turn your phone sideways. All right. For even just the one shot. I'm like, oh, all right. Before, as he's pulling that up, uh, let's just start with right off the bat. Where's your, what dates do you have coming up? Oh. Because uh, people aren't going to watch the whole thing. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after after that intro, they're like, huh. Oh. Um, now I got a bunch of shows in Texas coming up. Um, I have all the, the dates and stuff on my website, alexansel.com. Uh, but I'll be. Can you edit that out? I don't want to promote other. <laughs> Uh, if you just Google Y2 Kool-Aid. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, yeah, a bunch of shows in Texas. And uh, I got a couple nerdcore comedy shows coming up. One in Chandler, Arizona at the Mic Drop. Uh, that'll be club. in May. And then I have a uh, another nerdcore in San Diego at the Mic Drop out there in July. What's nerdcore? So nerdcore uh, is a uh, comedy show that I... Uh, my buddy uh, Mike Suarez helped me, uh, San Antonio comic who's now in New York. He's a producer for the uh, Robert Kelly YKWD show. Oh, nice. Does some work with Gas Digital. Super funny comic. Great guy. And um, his uh, wife at the time, she uh, would work with this um, uh, huge anime uh, convention out of Dallas called Akon. Not the rapper, but an anime thing, whatever. And they were looking for some like comedy stuff to do. And Mike's a huge nerd. I'm a huge nerd. And I was like, hey, let's go do like jokes we can't do in nightclubs for this audience. And we ended up doing, um, God, probably at least like 25 conventions together. And then only recently uh, I've been trying to like kind of bring that out again because I really miss doing those shows. And I miss having an audience for this, for that type of humor because... My, my current roommate, comedy bestie, my homeboy, Adam Dominguez, great comic, huge nerd as well. And we'll have our inside jokes and shit, but it's like, man, we got to share this with people. And uh, so nerdcore comedy is like basically doing all the jokes of like Star Wars, Star Trek, Game nice. of Thrones, all that anime, manga, comic books, comic book movies, nerd rage, all that kind of stuff. WWF, you, you grew up watching WWF, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. W oh, yeah. And then don't you usually have like an all that backpack too? Like uh, are you an all that fan? Or? No, no, that was uh, that's Krang from Ninja Turtles. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Damn yeah. It. You're getting so your 90s stuff confused. Well, yeah, I just I yeah. figured you, you were raised by Vince McMahon and Dan Schneider, and that kind of <laughs> explains yeah, a lot. Yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> and then people look into my history, and they go, oh, it's very boring. Uh, not a lot of allegedly yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that shit no <laughs> I, <laughs> I never had as much power as the two of them sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll see what happens yeah. we'll what, you can still be canceled yeah It'll right be, yeah there you go um that's cool though i love the, the nerd core thing that's that's yeah a, that's a fun and, idea you know they're like fun because the conventions themselves are nuts did a couple shows with joe calice and there was a convention where uh we may or may not have had some mushrooms yeah, and you know you're on you're on the substance, and then you see somebody in costume, and you know in the front of your brain that's just a guy in a costume, but in your mushroom brain you're like I don't trust the Joker. He wants to kill me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I remember we took him. We went outside for a little bit, and then as we walk inside, um, you know the doors open. All this AC hits us, and Joe sees this right, and he goes and scurries off. And Mike's looking at him like, what's his problem? And I knew what the problem was. I go, ceilings are a big deal right now. You know, that's why he ran off. But I'm okay with ceilings. And Mike is just like, the fuck what? are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I knew why he took off. Me, I'm cool with this. You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the audience there, you know, you see all the cosplayers. And it's a great place that people watch. You know, see people, oh, yeah. you know, in uh, cosplaying and costumes. And the first one I ever went to was real funny. I was just standing off in the corner just watching. And these cosplayers would come up to me and they would ask me all kinds of questions. And a comic we were with, she goes, you have a very alpha nerd, man, you know, like presence about you. Because people keep coming up to you. And I go, I do look like I'm in charge here. You know, like, <laughs> we got to change this. Because I kept going, I don't know. I don't fucking work here. The alpha nerd Alex Ansel. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take down Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> we should do something like that for, because uh, WrestleMania is going to be here in Vegas mm -hmm. next year. And like, I'm not a big wrestling guy at all, which is crazy because yeah. I spent my entire life yeah, what like, the hell? being a fan and then being involved yeah uh and i'm just i'm not into it at all but it's like, i hate comedy now <laughs> right yeah uh 
but uh, there, there's got to be there's so many comedians here that like wrestling mm-hmm. that we should do something. Stone Rob is, uh, has got an idea about that, and I told him to bring you in. Oh, okay. For well, that, yeah, he's got me. he's got like an idea, and then something I've I've always wanted to pitch, and um, and I think maybe I was talking to like uh, Darren Chase about it and somebody else about uh, get the new WWE video game, and then people pay ten mostly comics will pay ten bucks. We create that comic or a comic they hate, you know. So like I, uh, uh, you know, I create myself, pay ten bucks, and then the final four, the Royal Rumble, we use the money to book a show. So the first one out of the final four that's out will be the guest spot. Third place is host. Second oh, is gotcha. featured. Okay. Headliner yeah, yeah, yeah. is the winner. And then if it's a comic you hate that won it, they're not going to do it, then you do it, you know? Okay. And so I was like, oh, that could be. And then what we could do is uh, just put an autoplay mode, actually stream it and do, you know, have comics do the announcing and the commentary. And then, oh, there's our lineup. Clip that up and and then book a comedy show out of that and then maybe splice that together. I don't know. Like uh, I've I love streaming and video games, particularly fighting video games. That's yeah. my jam right there. That's the only thing I can do. Yeah. Like I literally any other video game since Super Nintendo. Yeah. If I'm playing it, I'm always humping the, the corner, <laughs> uh, and then I pick up the video game and then I start <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but the but fighting video games for some reason I can do. Yeah. I can actually do stuff with. Hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. That'd be fu- that would be fun. It. Uh, also, if there's a comic you hate, if, if it's a wrestling theme, you can just hit him with a chair. Which, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, I, you know, uh, there's probably just one that stands out, but whatever. And What's her uh, name? <laughs> what's her name? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, no, it'd be fun to create them. And then uh, <laughs> it'd be fun to create them and watch them get beat up. And then, oh, what if that person then beats me up? <laughs> ah, whatever. It'd be fun to watch. And then, so watch this. When I eventually bring it out with somebody... And then uh, you could hear all the juicy gossip oh, and the tea, go. and then uh, all the inside jokes would be super fun. I've always wanted to do this on a podcast because I uh-huh. see it all the time. After we're done recording, you can tell me who it is. Oh yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the when, scenes, I think yeah, you already know. I, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. especially the yeah. <laughs> That's the the guess. Um, Probably won't won't bump into them at Mothership anytime soon. You don't think so? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, have you been to the Mothership yet? I've you, been outside of it, but I haven't been inside of it yet. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been. I when I did last time I was in Austin, uh, Kill Tony was still doing the uh, Vulcan. Okay, which is a cool room. Yeah, but uh, I can't wait for the the comedy Mothership. I'm going to be in Austin in May. Yeah. Um, so yeah, awesome. that'll be fun. I it's it's weird to watch like Austin change so much from the time I started doing comedy because I started in San Antonio, which is about hour hour ten, and see how much the scene has changed. Yeah, and the audiences, and then seeing what um, you know the the evolution and everything else of it. Of I used to hate Austin because Austin was always like the cool you know the cooler older brother to San Antonio and like oh you know they have the the big festival and gets a lot of like, you know, eyes and and you know people will do the festival and go get development deals, do just for laughs, <laughs> just for laughs, funny, and uh, R I P, womp womp, yeah, and uh, <laughs> not bitter at all. Uh, I can't even get into fucking skank fest. All right, yeah, and, me neither. <laughs> well, I know why, but it won't be a problem anymore. Wait for me or no? Uh, well, oh. I don't know about you, but uh, no, because of they've something. seen your set. That's yeah, funny. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen my tits. Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought. Where are we going? Uh, just, oh, yeah, uh, Austin. Austin. Uh, and now it's like, it because uh, it used to be so, like, nerdist and elitist. And and, and when Joe Rogan said he was going to move there, and I was like, oh, I love this for Austin. Because now all these little fucking, uh, you know, fucking um, hipster fucking sure. flannel wearing dipshits that all you know jerk each other off for 10 minutes at a time they're gonna get invaded by these like alpha brain fucking <laughs> joe rogan bros and they're gonna beat the shit out of them and i was like <laughs> and now it's kind of like mellowed out and chilled out i was in austin recently and kind of got the lowdown of everything and it's so weird because i started out 15 years ago a lot of those cats that i started out with in austin at the same time they're still not doing comedy. Really? You know? just, yeah. They're... Some would argue they never started. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's fun to see, like, who's still standing and 
who's doing what because uh, a lot of my like initial of like oh fuck me buddy no fuck you was from like Austin people sure sure and uh, and I I'll, I'll say I was in my Kanye early Kanye <laughs> years of like I that was good motivation to have sure you know? not now Kanye because sure. yeah you know <laughs> you want a career uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know I've made some choices. <laughs> <laughs> When I when I started out, like we had the Seattle snub, like that okay. that sort of thing, and I was in yeah. my you know P Diddy phase, and <laughs> wearing a we, lot of shiny suits. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, uh, <laughs> when I flee the country, I need two seats. But uh, when uh, no, but the, uh, the um, it's funny because like the the hatred for that some people have in comedy for even someone like Rogan or whatever, who's just like yeah. they're far above. Yeah. us you know like rogan or whatever but i remember once in seattle there was a, a show that they advertised at some bar or whatever and it was it was literally called comics who hate joe rogan was the 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 show what and then yeah what? but it was ever average- jamie pull that up <laughs> <laughs> But it was on, on the Facebook. It was like a, a tech, anybody who wants to be on this show. And then it was like, uh, comics who hate Joe Rogan, there's no pay for the show. And it's yeah. Like, yeah, of course not. So Carlos Mencia was headlining. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like, you got to let me sell merch. So, uh, <laughs> so I love you, Carlos. All right. <laughs> Carlos is uh, a good dude. Like, yeah, it's a, it's no, a weird, for like, sure. Yeah. I uh, hung, uh, hung out with him at the Dirty at 1230 yeah. the last a few weeks ago. Yeah, whatever. he's, he's a good guy. I got nothing but great things to say about him. So, yeah. like, I've worked with him. He's a never times. seen me work, so I've never heard him. Do- <laughs> it would be weird if all of a sudden he was like, "And look how fat I am!" And I'm like, "Wait a minute, that's." <laughs> so I don't think he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, Seattle, and and then where did you come up in Seattle or? Well, Tacoma, or, really. Oh, okay, really Tacoma. Didn't, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot in Seattle at all. Yeah, um, there was a. I like a couple of mics. I did a, a a couple of shows at this club called Laughs. Um, Good name. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then I was booked to do the um, what is it? The comedy bar, the Capitol Hill comedy bar, oh, the one I've that heard, yeah that, yeah that just uh, that canceled those four comics from being on the show. They canceled them for being on their show. Oh, okay. And so I canceled my show there, and and then it became like this weird thing between me and the owner who we had been friends. Yeah. But I was literally just like, look, you made a decision. I'm, I'm not going to question that, but I don't want to yeah. to do that. And then uh, she apparently took offense to that or whatever. But ah, what can you do? Ah. What can you do? Yeah. Now, I remember doing shows out there in Seattle, and uh, it was so weird how – because what, Seattle and Tacoma are how far apart? They're like 40 minutes. Right, of just how two different those scenes are. Because I did the same jokes in both places – and in Seattle, it's like, oh my God, you were so hateful. Yeah, you said some horrible things up there, and then Tacoma was just like, oh, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it's the same set. You know? Yeah, like, <laughs> that's that's the whole thing. And then you have like the outskirts, like 40 minutes out from them. Both yeah. is Enum Claw, which is yeah. just like it's the the type of people you would expect in a place called Enum Claw. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's just wild. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like the 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 worse, the better. I don't know why I just got this memory, but I remember before leaving Texas. You know, people are just like, maybe you're just too liberal for Texas. Because I would talk about, like, having a gay dad and, you know, being a nerd and all kinds of shit. And then same set I would do in Seattle. It's like, yeah, you're way too conservative for Seattle. And I go, yeah, I probably am. So, yeah. like, don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find a nice spot for yourself around Lima, Ohio. That's, oh, okay. That's, that's where uh, you... Don't put me in Ohio. No, I'm good. That's Unless it's, like, witness protection. So. <laughs> But <laughs> what is your your least favorite place like that you've been to perform? Stand? Oh man, uh, I just California. Like I just, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be like that fucking Texan guy, but Cali sucks, man. Can't smoke anywhere. Can't fuck. I said something the other day, and just you know, some regular ass dude that was like, "You got some wild ideas," and it was it was something dumb throwaway of like. Man, people get real retarded when you say gay around here. You know, it was just like, uh, uh. Like, it was like, sh- fucking shit. And then they got out. all gay about the word retarded. Bro. I was like, quit being a. Fr-. Okay. Um, I can say that. Both my dads were. <laughs> 
So what would you say is a tougher room then, San Francisco or Seattle? <laughs> uh, well, I have no desire to go to San Francisco, so San Francisco, you got to walk through the shit before you can get into the, the, the literal human shit. I've been through enough farms in Texas. I don't need to deal with that <laughs> horse shit. All right, uh, but like, uh, just everything's so expensive in California. Yeah, yeah, the weather's great. All right, I'm not gonna do a bunch of outside shit. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. The weather being great doesn't really do a lot for us. That's you know, either of us less, are, less suntan lotion I gotta put on. Sure, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But uh I just the laws and everything else and like the whole LA especially like LA open micer comic culture of like, hey, follow me on Instagram and I go, No, that's not how you introduce yourself to a person. Right. You, know, you go, right. Hi, my name is Oh, I'm also a comedian. Ha, da, 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 da. What's your Instagram? Then, yeah, yeah, that's a whole another rant for another day. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 obviously, this is going to be overstated, but the pandemic changed so much with everything. Yeah, because like in Seattle, like I never really even noticed. Like I knew, you know, Seattle was a little bit more left than I than I am. Like yeah. I, I'm a pretty, you know, for the most part, left of center guy. But, yeah, uh, it's it's definitely a lot farther than me, but. Uh, once the the pandemic happened and like Inslee was our governor and he the rules that he came out with and all that sort of stuff the the weirdest one I still remember was he closed down comedy clubs and everything else but then let strip clubs be open <laughs> <laughs> and it's like dude okay just tell us you want to see naked yeah. women like you yeah. know what I mean like that's it was such a weird thing to be like oh we can't perform comedy but if you want to take your clothes off. And, you know, just you but I bet keep you all the ugly on. ones got real funny real quick. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to keep your you can take your panties off, but you got to keep the mask on. I think that was <laughs> yeah. the, that was the deal. Yikes! Oh, uh. But there, there's uh, you were showing me something about the Olympics coming up, right? Yeah. So speaking of pandemics, they actually banned when the Olympics were on that there could be no intimacy. So they just lifted that ban, and now they have provided three hundred thousand condoms for athletes at the twenty twenty four Paris Olympics. All right. See, first of all, I had no idea, and not that I'm a big Olympic guy, yeah. But like, I had no idea that a big issue at the Olympics was all the athletes fucking. Although I guess it does make sense; they're, they're all living all gorgeous. Yeah, they're no, all I mean, it make, look, I don't statues, man. Do you think I know anything about the athletic Fair lifestyle? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a pro but so wrestler, like, you know. <laughs> look, if you got if oh, you no. got some strange on the road, then think of what they're getting. The other wrestlers were definitely fucking a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah see? I, I I would sometimes be in the room. <laughs> Uh, they, <laughs> you're, you're the love seat on the couch. <laughs> that's right. Why is there a beanbag on your couch? My wife oh, called me a beanbag the other day. Aww. She literally said, you're like a beanbag chair. I'm like, that's not a compliment. <laughs> I, I'm soft all over, ladies. <laughs> that's not a good. What? I did, uh, for a roast show years ago, somebody called me a trash bag full of cottage cheese. <laughs> and I was like. Yo, my man, that's very funny. That's very <laughs> and very apt. But they're giving out, it's only 300,000? Yeah, so they're stocking with at least 300,000, and then it says they're celebrate with a condom. So I'm assuming if you win a medal, it's like, I like how the tradition of providing condoms at the Olympics actually started at 1988 Seoul Olympics to raise awareness for the HIV and AIDS epidemic. So. In Didn't help Greg Luganis, am I right? <laughs> That's right. In he 88, they started that. giving out condoms. <laughs> So that people didn't get AIDS. And then in 2020, they just stopped giving out condoms so we didn't get uh, we didn't get COVID. But it was weird because people would say COVID wasn't uh, an STD, but it totally is. If you're fucking somebody <laughs> and you have COVID, you're going to give them COVID. I... Right, Derek? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jamie, pull that up. All right, there you go. Go on Pornhub. Let's look this up. But there was another thing that I saw, and I don't remember where it was in the article, but it said uh, that in 2020, the athletes were told they had to stay six and a half feet away from everybody. But I love that because you're you're, you're given an tell extra that to a pole vaulter. Well, you're given yeah. an, you're given an extra six inches because we were all supposed to be six feet. But they're like, well, we don't want you to fuck, so it's got to be six and a half. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, uh, and they even continue this and and come. Communist China? And I thought, yeah, one child per couple, right? Not over here. They're fucking busting nuts like crazy. 
It is true. The Paris is like, no, well, let's let's give him three hundred thousand. Yeah. That was my Paris. That was my French. Your that Parisian, yeah, yeah, yeah. three hundred thousand. <laughs> right. Taking a drag off a cigarette while drinking nothing but butter and wine. <laughs> hey, wee oui, wee. Oui. Hey, Americans, come save us. I could All be right. French, actually. <laughs> No, you smell so much better. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Well, uh, listen, I try. The way I eat onions, though, I could be French. I, I fucking eat all kinds of onions, cook all kinds of onions. What about garlic? I used to work with this guy. My first job, I worked with a, a guy who was a great dude. He was a big dude. Yeah. Big, heavy, just a big, fat, fuck, just a fat. <laughs> but uh, he... <laughs> One of these guys. He always <laughs> ate garlic constantly. Like raw? Well, I don't know. I have no idea because okay. I never saw him eating garlic. Yeah. It's just he'd walk... Like, you could tell that he came in because he smelled like garlic all the time. Oh, my God. To eat so much garlic, you smell like it? That's Was he Italian? <laughs> Was he one of those? No. Last name was Grant. That's not very... Okay. Uh, maybe he covered it up. <laughs> he had Probably. the mustache. He actually had a curly mustache, which I thought was great. Like he's a 1920s villain on a train track? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That's how he crushes garlic by laying them on the <laughs> Just lay it out tracks. on those tracks. Yeah. It peels it for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, uh, no, the only thing I've eaten that I've smelled like is uh, pussy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I smelled tuna. <laughs> I thought it was just because of the footlongs. Have yeah. you seen those? Uh, the, now what Subway's doing? The they do like the cookie? footlong cook, uh, cookie. Yeah. When, whenever some new fast food place has <laughs> one, and I and I talk to like Adam about it, he goes, "Is this from your dream journal again?" And I'm like, "You fucking asshole! Not this time." Uh, but you know, like somebody sent me a thing of like, "There's six new ranches from Hidden Valley," and I go. I, I've definitely thought about this one. You know, yeah, like I've yeah, had the yeah. idea for this one. But yeah. I had that when it, I pulled into a parking lot and I saw the the poster for it. And the, yeah. uh, on the on the poster, it's like this, right? Yeah. For the the cookie, it's huge. Yeah. And so I went in and I was like, Fuck, I, I'm, I, like I'm not gonna get a foot. Did you cookie. did you order a sandwich as a red herring? No, 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 no. Okay, I just went and said like, I want a foot long cookie. cookie. Yeah, yeah. Were cookies not long enough before? <laughs> They're like foot long cookie. <laughs> but they, well, here's the problem: they hand it to me. Yeah. And it's so much smaller than I wasn't thinking. Oh, that's okay. not a foot long. That's that's like three feet. So I was dis. I'm holding a foot of cookie so, and i'm like this is not because the one on the poster is like fucking it's a three, meter four feet. Yeah, yeah exactly and you're like oh well, that one yeah and you're like no that's enlarged <laughs> just the, nobody's hands are that big that's holding it you're like so as predicted as i'm walking out i've got a foot of cookie and yeah. i'm just depressed that it's only a foot <laughs> the idea of it was so much better than the actual yeah. thing right yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find that happens to me when I buy stuff and I look forward to it. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get it. I can't wait. And then you get it, and you're like, oh, man, that thrill is gone. Huh? That's why I need to go to therapy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always like that with movies. Like, if I if there's a movie coming out and I get really excited about it, it yeah. always it always sucks. Yeah. Um, but then if I go into a movie and I'm like, I have no interest in this whatsoever, then it'll entertainment it's always the the set of expectations yeah, it's say. like with, with barbie i went in i had a pink shirt on i was like i went there with my wife there you go i went there with my wife uh no but we uh i, I wanted to get all in on the thing i came out i had this this pink shirt on and put the collar up i had my hair coming yeah. over and she's like you look like you ate ken and i'm like yeah why not just say hey ken yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know whatever. why not just go hey uh we're not gonna watch the mario movie kirby <laughs> and then <laughs> You know what, Todd? You're still Ken enough, buddy. No, thanks, man. Uh, yeah. This guy's a real Kent. Wait, is that a <laughs> version of Kent? <laughs> Quit being such a Kent. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Barbie, I, you know, I know I was supposed to hate it because I'm definitely, you know, I can be portrayed as like, oh, look at this online incel fucking. Alex you know, incel. Where, yeah. I'm no. Sure you could. Yeah, but yeah, Patrick did that. But, uh, I watched it and I was like, "Oh, this is the Matrix for like Gen Z." That's all it. I don't know. It's and so I, weird. I, I, it surprised me. It was good. You know? See, that's that's what so, I think this is exactly what I'm talking about. I went into it, and, yeah. and my wife, it was the same thing. We went in there, and I knew, okay, this is going to be a female forward. This is going to be fucking a lot of girl boss bullshit. Am I right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you have that expectation. If you go yeah. into the Barbie movie thinking it's going to end up with her in Ken's arms and he's the superhero, you're a <laughs> fucking moron. But Ken was pretty based, and I was like, yo, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And it's so funny. He got nominated, but she didn't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Ryan Gosling. <laughs> 
nominated. Yeah. I still jerk off to her feet in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> but that, that's another thing. It was so weird that they that there was so much backlash about the fact that it didn't get nominated. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you or, or, or that it didn't win. Yeah. And it's like the fact that that movie was even nominated yeah. is so against what the Oscars usually are. Yeah. Like, how the fuck would a, a movie about any 80s toy, or I guess 60s, yeah. 50s toy, but how would that ever have yeah. been nominated in a previous year? Well, it was so nuanced. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like when people are, are trashing the old Roadhouse because the new one came out, yeah. I go, don't you talk shit about classic Swayze Roadhouse. Dude, it's a fucking masterpiece. It is. Terry it's Funk. Movie. Bro. I mean, great. Sam Elliott. Yeah. Right? Bro. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Roadhouse is great. Yeah, uh, the new one's okay. Like I, I even tweeted. I was like, if I don't hear Conor McGregor be like, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> like I'm gonna be so pissed, and they didn't. I haven't well, seen the new one yet. Yeah. I've, I've heard Conor's acting is about what you'd expect. <laughs> it's, it's magnificent. Yeah, it's just him fucking <laughs> trying to make himself look wider, and I'm like, rah, 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 like he's walking around twenty pound balls. I'm like, oh yeah, this is, yeah. Out of all the people I talk shit about, this is one that's gonna get picked up. <laughs> um, but no, it's but it's fun to watch that on a movie screen. I mean, it was my TV, but um, it's ridiculous. And uh, I, I was like. Put them in more stuff. Why not? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever keeps him throwing shit at tour buses <laughs> from when he's getting all thugged out mentality. So good for him. That was the best. That was, that, that's my favorite Connor. Is yeah. Just throwing shit at, at tour buses. <laughs> just getting in fights, like these wild <laughs> brawls that were happening after fights. It reminds me of when they used to make fun of Russell Crowe on South Park. Oh, yeah. He was like, drinking and fighting, drinking and fighting. It's like, just make that about Conor McGregor now. It's 100%. Yeah. Yeah, Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor is the South Park. Yeah, he, he almost played like a spoof of himself in that movie because I did see The New Roadhouse. And it's like, take him as his UFC walkouts and stuff, and he just almost made fun of himself. The, the acting to me was so bad, it was good. Like, it was I love it. <laughs> I don't think it was as nuanced as you put it, but you I know what? I don't think he intentionally tried to, but that's what I'm saying. I don't, know, I don't think he intentionally tried, but it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. He's like, when I was getting into my character, I was thinking about... You know, like, that's a very shitty Connor. It's a, it's a terrible it's a, Irish... But it's a it's even a worse. Fine thing. Irish. Thank you. All it's right. a fine Irish. <laughs> Apparently, you can't say the phrase "fine Irish" without trying to sound like you're. Oh, okay. Have an Irish accent. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, lad. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, I'm a method actor, you know. I'm like, all right, <laughs> Liam Neeson, <laughs> just him, and like, ah. What do you, what? What if they remade Leprechaun, but they used Conor, Conor McGregor, McGregor and Leprechaun? Leprechaun in a horror movie? <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck, that'd be amazing. Him. Leprechaun in space. Just him and Jennifer Aniston. (laughs) (laughs) Is that who was in it? She was in like number four, I think. Yeah. I'm every all my best friends are all in horror movies. To me, I'm like, oh, the world's horrible enough. I'm not into that, you know. Uh, But I figure I don't know. Are you into horror movies? I used to be really into horror movies. What's weird? I used to love like a good slasher film. Okay. Uh, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. Yeah. Uh, My wife. Bronco chases. (laughs) Sure, Bronco chases. my wife, uh, she hates slasher movies, uh-huh. but she's really into like the paranormal stuff. Okay, which used to freak like me cryptids the fuck and shit, out. Mothman. yeah, like that, <laughs> like uh, uh, the, what was the what, what are the ones that came Chupacabra? out? Conjuring, Conjuring, oh, okay. Conjuring ones. She's she okay. and and so like I've kind of switched over into ghosts on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, like real- I, I prefer what was the one with Jennifer Love Hewitt Ghost Whisperer right oh I thought you were talking about uh, I know we did last summer oh no I was talking about her giant cans in that show yeah. <laughs> well, and I know what you did last summer. She did, there's that scene where she's like, "What do you know?" And she's like oh, screaming yeah, up yeah, at the yeah, camera, yeah. and it's like it's very '90s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know why that made me think of Sydney Sweeney, but mm, all right, I'm happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's try because so I don't know. Th- this isn't a great segue, but let's try. Yeah. It's called "Off the Todd Rope." All right, yeah, that's uh. What do you what do you think? Somebody of the- somebody put that together, right? <laughs> somebody had a white a white board that was like, mm, mm. was it was it Jamie over here that did it? It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> unless right. uh, unless do you think it's creative? Because if so, then it was me. No, um, <laughs> it uh, makes me roll my eyes. And and here's yeah, to no, be it's honest, Jamie. And to be honest, 
Like when you hear something like that and it elicits an emotion, emotional reaction, you did your job, you know? Bang, so it doesn't it. mean it's good. No, but it made me go, <laughs> like, This is the Barbie movie of podcast uh, segments. I, somebody should make a soundboard of me, especially when I hang out in the back of open mics. I'm like, Ugh. I think it just for the show. Every time I go, okay, it's time for Off the Todd Rope, you just hear, Ugh. <laughs> like, Is that his death knell? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it's called off the Todd rope because right. in wrestling you go off the top. Do you get it? Like yeah, top. But no, my name is Todd. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just doing. I thought, I thought it was Rolls Royce because you have so many rolls. All right. Hey. Uh, hey. Luxurious. Are these just fortunes from fortune? <laughs> They're just fortune cookies that I've collected over time. Panda Express. <laughs> when, right. when I get my Xiao Min Wang, when I, I go to Ping Pang Pong. <laughs> believe it or not, when we were on the ride over here, we were. Talking Chinese food, which probably isn't surprising. Yeah, because we, we passed by an animal hospital. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see any ducks in the window. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so rapid fire. They have their own side of town, you know. Now I was doing the whole Shane Gillis, but it got canceled. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> well, now you'll never write for SNL, but you will host. Oh, no. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so rapid fire. I know you're not used to doing anything rapid fire, but um, okay. What's the most ridiculous thing you've ever bought? Uh, twenty pairs of Crocs. Twenty pairs. I of own Crocs. twenty pairs of Crocs. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like in one. No, trip. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I need it. Fucking 20. no. They're Why all like cool. Lim- uh, they're all like cool limited edition ones. They're not like- cool. Fuck off. I love Crocs. <laughs> They're the most stylish diabetic footwear you can get on the market. That's in one piece. And then no. Um probably I have some ridiculous shoes. I have the I have the Cartman uh Adidas South Park editions. Uh I have four pairs of Ninja Turtle Doc Martin. Are they are they of each different yeah, turtle? Yeah, each oh, okay. pair. Each well, then pair. you have to do that. I, I can't break up the brotherhood. Can you? Can, do you ever switch? Like, do you ever? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so oh, you yeah. wear like Donatello and, yeah. and uh, the other ones. The other ones. There you go. Leonardo. 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 Leonardo Raphael's Donatello. My I'm a Raphael guy. <laughs> Raphael. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think it was Curly. Terry. Don- Terry. Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Donatello. I don't know if you said that right. <laughs> Donnie, Mikey, Ralph, and. Uh, the other one. Danny, Donnie, Joe, John, Jordan. There you go. Was that New Kids on <laughs> the Block? New Kids on the Block. <laughs> All right. Uh, new Kids on the Croc. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you could have dinner with any historical figure, who would it be and why would it be Adolf? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, it obviously would be, um, oh, hello, Julia Child. That's who it would be. Because, you know, she'd cook. She'd cook. Yeah. No. Well, you know, like, <laughs> that's so fucked up. Um, who would it be? Uh, hit, oh, man. Shigeru Miyamoto comes to mind because he created uh, Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Mario. And I love, vid- you know, video you really games. really are a nerd. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Shigeru Miyamoto would probably be one. Uh, oh, for wrestling? Stone Cold, probably. That'd be, they would just be beers. Sure. And then maybe barbecue, I guess, too. From the front yard. Uh, yeah, backyard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Who? Man, historical. Uh, no, nah, dude. Adolf was vegan. I can't hang with that. You know? Oh, that's why I hate him. <laughs> I did a bunch of other shit. But, man, he was vegan. Fuck that noise. I ain't trying to eat no sprouts with a motherfucker. It's weird <laughs> that he was vegan considering what he put in the oven. Do you? Not a lot of room for tofu. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? <laughs> that was just a random pull. That was just a random pull. Uh, uh, the weird. I mean, you know, I spent first ten years of my life. I lived in Germany, so we, you know, I <laughs> hold on. So we try like French cuisine and shit. So like, I've had escargot as a kid. Uh, uh, I've had some recently. I had like crickets, like the. Crispy, oh. not like oh, there's one on the ground. Ah, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> you make noise. Ah, bah, bah. No, um, and I and I re- remember saying these could use ranch seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy I told that to, he messaged me like a couple weeks later. He goes, you're right about the ranch seasoning. They're fire. And I'm like, fucking a man. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to open your French restaurant and it's escargot <laughs> with a zesty it would, ranch. It would never be French. Uh, <laughs> maybe French inspired. I mean. 
if you you know how the French cook, they just put butter on everything, and it's like okay, all right, that's why it tastes good. Uh, I uh, I love cooking shows. I would love to be a judge on a cooking show and try some of that stuff. Oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even compete on one because I'm um, weirdest thing I've eaten. Are you a good cook? Like, do you cook? Oh yeah, I can throw it down. Yeah. Yeah. I, what's your favorite thing to cook? Man, um, if you and I were on a date. <laughs> and, you're, and you're bringing me home. All right, all right. Well, I would be like, "What's your favorite dish?" And then, and I would create my version of that. So you would have like a fancy cereal. <laughs> I'd, I'd, uh, it'd be Cheez-Its because that's my take on cereal. Oh, so instead of going sweet, we're going savory, savory. right? Mm, and like then it. a mug root beer. Oh, a little mug root beer in the bowl. Of Maybe beer. IBC. Redu- it would be a reduction, so it'd be like a syrup. And then, I don't know. <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to stay home sick all the time because yeah. uh, I was never sick, but I would always fake it because yeah. during the afternoon, uh, ESPN would play World Class Championship Wrestling. Yeah, and my mom was recording her soap operas, so I couldn't record that. Obviously, so that's why I dropped out of school. <laughs> that's why I dropped out of school. Uh, and so I, uh, in the morning, I would eat like the rest of our cereal in yeah. the house. And then I was looking around for something else. And what I would do is I'd go in and we always had these bags of cookies. Yeah. And I'd just take the cookies and crumble them up into a bowl and then pour milk on top of that. And I haven't done Innovator. That s- that's, uh, yeah. That's- I haven't done that since I was a kid, but I've thought about it every day since I was a kid. <laughs> it's so fucking good. You uh, deconstructed the, uh, yeah. You were ahead of Cookie Crisp before Cookie Crisp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They need to give you royalties. <laughs> God damn. All right, last one. Uh, if you could switch lives with one person for a day, who would it be? Um. Oh wow. Uh. <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind was so fucking ego. Uh, it, was what, like, what, what? it would just be like anyone close to me, so I could see how badass I am <laughs> in real life. I'd want to be Adam Dominguez so I can see how fucking cool I am. <laughs> I love but that's so that's the perfect, No, that's the perfect <laughs> That's great, dude. That's a great answer. <laughs> that's exactly what I like. <laughs> um, I, uh, well, it wouldn't be that vegan we talked about. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, like your I, take on Hitler is just a <laughs> fucking vegan. <laughs> um, who, whoever is the product taster of uh, of Mountain Dew and gets to, because I fancy myself kind of a Mountain Dew sommelier, and so it's like, yo, I can tell you what Mountain Dew pairs well with what food. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to make that into a little TikTok series, maybe of like, hey, this is a meal I prepared that complements this Mountain Dew. I know? can see that. Do they still make Code Red? Fuck yeah, they do. Do they? That oh, was yeah. my fit. Dude, dude. Like Code Red. Code Red in high school? Shit. Oh, dude. Come on. Dude, we'd... Uh, <laughs> this sounds so shitty. We'd give it to girls. No. They would know <laughs> they were getting alcoholic drinks, but the reason they loved it is because they didn't... It was fruity, but you couldn't taste the liquor. Sure. And so it'd be Code Red and uh, like white rum. And so it's like, yo, save the Code Red. That's for the ladies. All right? <laughs> dude, you should just open a bar. Code, yeah, for underage. Red, no, well, no. <laughs> red flags, and that's what it is. And it's like, play nothing but P. Diddy. Play nothing but R. Kelly. <laughs> you can, you, the, the restroom doors are Epstein or Jis Lane or whatever. Jis Lane, I'll tell you what. No, that was a whole valley. All right. Uh, Lane. <laughs> Stupid. God damn it. Uh <laughs> I'm still thinking of who would you switch with? Be like, <laughs> yeah, who? Uh, so, uh, uh, not anybody on uh, the flight logs. No. Um, uh, yeah. So definitely a product tester of, of Mountain Dew just to try out all the new flavors. I like it because it's only a day. You know what I mean? Sure. I don't want something with too much responsibility and I fuck some shit up. Like, oh, you're Biden now? Fuck off! Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be smelling kids' hair and fucking riding bikes. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like you and him would probably ride bikes the same way. <laughs> <laughs> with the same success. Yeah. If anything, uh, it'd be a motorcycle with a sidecar. And I'd be like, riding, though. <laughs> when I was a kid, like, I used to love riding bikes. Yeah. Just like I used to love roller skate. And uh, <laughs> you just one leg up. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I just we passed by a roller skating rink here in Vegas. And it's like, I don't, I don't even remember what it's called. It's called something like. Yeah. 
look that up. What it's called? It's <laughs> Jamie, look that up. All right. <laughs> it's like Rollerland. Dis- it's something crazy. Yeah. It, it's very seventies, eighties looking. Yeah. And in my mind, I feel like oh, I still know how to skate. But it's like I, I tried riding a bike a few years ago, yeah. and it was not. First off, the seat was very uncomfortable. Oh my god, there's <laughs> like there's Crystal Palace Skating Center. No, it wasn't that. Um, let's see. But yeah, the uh, there's a roll your ankle, roll your ankle. Yeah. That's <laughs> a children's memorial roller rink. That's gotta be <laughs> Jesus. children's Desert memorial. <laughs> <laughs> Just Skate Rock City. The oh, it's got to be Skate Rock City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Skate Rocks. Oh, it's it's closed now, but yeah, on Boulder Highway. Oh That's yeah, it. I used to. Uh, yeah, I would pass that place when when uh, where I used to live in Henderson. Yeah, yeah. Skate Rock Get City. Get good drugs. I don't know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. And mostly Adderall from the kids there. Uh, yeah, from them. Yeah, <laughs> from them. I was taking drugs off the street. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Yeah. We, well, our, uh, the next time, the next time you're on, which I hope you want to come back on, we should do it from Skate Rock City and just, <laughs> just a podcast uh, where we're just. I didn't even like skating when I was a kid. You really? Know? Oh, dude. I I think what horrified it for me was uh, again, a wee lad in Germany. We'd go to the ice skating rink, and I remember one time just fucking falling backwards, landing flat on my back, getting all the air knocked out. And I was like. I don't want to do this dumb shit. And I just went to the arcade the rest of the day. And that's what sparked my ignition for a uh, Miss Pac Man. <laughs> Tetris Street Fighter. And then you're over humping in the, the corner. No, yeah, I, you know. uh, I used to always uh, um, go to this place called the, the Roller Barn, which was like in, in Oak Harbor, Washington. It was this giant barn. And upstairs, they you got me. Uh huh. That <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I found I realized I could go really fast, but I had no idea how to stop. So they had all these chair rail uh, size walls. Yeah. And I would just I just got to the point, cause, especially because I watch wrestling all the time. Yeah. I just got to the point where I just plow into that. Yeah. Flip over the wall and then land on the other side, yeah. and that's just how I stopped every time I went out on the rink. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. Good times. <laughs> Crash and burn. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, so yeah. the special, one more time, Dagmar's Brother. Dagmar's Brother, it's on the internet? Is that how you pronounce it? The internet. Yeah. It's is that on, where the, all the porn is? Documentaries. That's what I call them. Oh, okay. Makes me sound smarter. Yeah. Uh, so in between those documentaries, you can, <laughs> unless it's uh, like stepbrother porn, then it's, those are home movies. Sure. Once you uh, <laughs> once you get done with watching one of those documentaries, I'm always really tired. So then you just flip over. <laughs> you put it on. You put it on a comedy special that's low energy. <laughs> right. And just very monotone. <laughs> it's very funny. Like, people should Thank definitely you. go check it out. It's, it's yes, amazing. please do. It's, uh, I think, what, 14 years of, of comedy put into this 43-minute special, and I'm super proud of it. Had a little white from 3-6 Mafia fly out and come do the intro. Fucking. And, and he killed it, too. It's a, fun, it's a fun intro, too. Yeah. And yeah. you and Adam hugging, like, right before you go up on stage. It's so sweet. Like, I, I, I had a little tear in my eye. Aw, you're, uh, some, some, uh, other people have shared that. And I go, I know. I have good <laughs> friends, and it's, uh, a lot of hard work went into it, so shout outs to Laugh After Dark. Shows. I would I would have been there, but I didn't get invited. So, <laughs> okay. uh, no, but uh, great special. You got dates coming up in Texas. Go yep. to alexansel.com. Alex Ansel, no. Alexansel.com, yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, just got, did a bunch of stuff in Arizona, but probably going to go back there, too. And Do you, you said am, mic drop, right? Is that yeah, mic drop. Oh, yeah, so I'm doing one in Chandler. That one's in May. And then uh, the mic drop in San Diego is in July. And then, you know, trying to fill out dates for the rest. And then going going to West Virginia uh, for Christmas because I got family up there. Dagmar, my sister, she lives up there. So I go, hey. You know, like, I, see some I put Virginia your name Indian. on there. Oh, whatever. No, that's from my brother-in-law side of the family. That's not us. We're Texas. So, right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got dates coming up. We said it at the beginning, but uh, I'm going to be in Dallas and uh, Biloxi and uh, New Orleans and Boston and Washington D.C. and Vegas. So I get it. You go to more places. <laughs> well, in- no West Virginia on my. Oh, okay. Not yet. I'll talk to some people. <laughs> Please do. All right. Thanks, bro. Thanks for coming out. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, oh, man. Yeah. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. It's been great. <laughs> Boom. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, nice. <laughs>